the assessment of local sources of energy is complementary to the assessment of the needs. A complete assessment should consider both renewable sources available in the specific location, such as sun and wind, and the resources which are available through the local market. A particular attention should be reserved to unexploited resources and to, let's say, hidden resources, such as waste material, which uh, could be successfully used with a new and uh, different purpose. When talking about food preparation, and in particular cooking in refugee camps or internally displaced person settlements, biomass is of course the most common source of energy. An accurate assessment of biomass resources is a complex issue. In general, no detailed data are available for specific sites. On the other hand, to understand the maximum amount of biomass that it is possible to harvest in order to avoid negative effects on the woodland, like uh, the case in the picture, is mandatory in most cases. A good compromise for the assessment of biomass can be achieved through a survey on the field. In particular, three are the main actions to carry out. First, all the different kinds of biomass resources should be identified, also including biomass and organic residuals, such as sawdust, straw, rice husk, oil seeds, shells, and so on. Secondly, considerations should be done on the distance between the resources and the camps or settlements, and regarding all the logistic aspects affecting the transportation of fuel. Thirdly, the direct observation of the area of biomass collection is very important to notice eventual negative effects of fuel harvesting, while the observation of the area around the camps or sediments can reveal the availability of unexploited resources. As per other renewable sources of energy, sun is the most common and uh, easy to be assessed. Solar radiation can be successfully used for uh, photovoltaic systems to generate electricity, or by systems directly using thermal energy, such as solar cookers. In both cases, the assessment of solar radiation is easily performed thanks to the consultation of online databases and maps, like the one you can see in the figure, or using data from weather forecast centers. The assessment of wind resources is more difficult since it is site-specific. Moreover, average wind speed in general can vary depending on the period of the year. For this reason, data from the specific area of interest should be measured all along the year in order to have an accurate understanding of the wind potential. In some cases, it's not possible to proceed with uh, this direct measurement. A valid alternative could be to obtain secondary data, for example from airports or weather stations present in the proximity of the location of intervention. Finally, hydro is another resource strictly site-specific. The potential in this case is given by the combination of two elements, that are the flow rate and the height of an eventual waterfall. Also in this case, the resource is affected by seasonal variability, which often requires a direct and case-by-case uh, -case evaluation. On the other hand, small hydro plants, such as uh, the one you can see in the figure, can provide affordable and reliable power supply. Therefore, this kind of energy source should always be considered when a stream or a river are present in the surrounding area. Mm -hmm.